Alrighty. Hey gang. Welcome back. Another bro audio video. Been a while. I guess not that long, but haven't been doing too many of them. Nice to see you guys. Um, so today I wanted to talk about uh, secondary air in a batch box rocket mass heater and give you guys some insight into where I'm at these days with all of this progression and talk about some of the issues and concerns and and uh, factors that go into figuring out how to work out your secondary air part for your batch box rocket mass heater. So now we're talking specifically about batch boxes. Uh, J tubes really don't need secondary air. There's a couple little uh, that's not exactly right. There's a couple of tricks you can do. Um, Peter's little P channel which uh, just helps separate the fuel from the front of the firebox and allows the air to get in uh, where the fuel might otherwise obstruct it. Kind of qualifies as secondary air, although not really. It's more just uh, physical um, barrier that keeps the air from getting blocked. Um, but at any rate, J tubes don't need anything and they don't, they don't, uh, or anything more than that, although that does help a little bit. Um, but they definitely don't uh, benefit from air being injected farther downstream than the firebox. Uh, entry than the primary air en entrance. Um, it, all the air comes in at the same place and is delivered to the fuel basically at the same place. Um, that's not exactly true, but you know, up or down, but it, you're not feeding stuff down into the core further downstream than the fuel. And they tend to run best that way. If you do try and feed air downstream, you end up, te you tend to just cool things down and make it worse. So we're talking about batch boxes and we're talking about um, really the material needs and things like that for your secondary air. Now, years ago when Peter first refined the batch box, which came from sort of a lot of different people's um, uh, input, um, Lasse, giving you credit there, Lasse Holmes, he did a lot with that letter box, getting things close in, in the batch box. And Peter just got the Testo out and, and really fine-tuned it into being the wonder that it is. Now Peter had his uh, secondary air originally coming in from the top. It's a good good way to go. It's really simple um, to to install. It lasts basically uh, for the life of the stove. There's a lot of good to it, and so I don't think it's something that uh, necessarily needs to be thrown out with the bathwater. But it doesn't achieve the same um, efficiency and longevity and doesn't uh, longevity of burn I should say and doesn't uh, doesn't have quite the 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 mixing and the preheating that that give us ultimate um, efficiency um, compared to some of the later developments so Peter came out with that one and then uh, f a year later or two years later I, I got my testo and I did a lot of testing on secondary air and I came up with my pre-port secondary air tube which injects the air just prior to the port at the back of the of the firebox. Um, you guys have seen that hopefully on my website if you haven't I'll try and put a link in the uh, comments down below. Um, but that's been since that's been uh, four years now I guess five years since that's been out and my general layout for that hasn't changed. Peter has since adopted uh, a slightly modified version of my pre-port tube and that seems to be the generally the accepted way to deliver our secondary air to the batch boxes these days. Um, and so I just wanted to talk about why it's there, what it does, why I pick the materials I do, and, and why some things that we hear about, um, you know, what are some of the factors that go into it you know, what's a good material, all that stuff. So let's talk about that. So first of all, the pre-port tube, uh, as I designed it at first, was consisted of two parts. Um, there's the horizontal, which in my case, this is a two and a half inch by one and a half inch square tubing. I'm gonna kick my cat out of the way, excuse me. <laughs> and, uh, what I've done in, in, in most of them is I've cut a circle here and then just welded on the second part, which is the vertical portion. Now this one kind of was just a test bed. I just cut a square there and you know, there's ways you can cobble these things together like that without any welding. It'll still deliver the air where you need it. So don't be put off by the fabrication part of this. You can find scraps. 
of steel. You could use old bed frames and weld them together if you're a welder. You know, there's a lot of different stuff you can do. Now this is simply black iron pipe, two inch diameter. Um, and like I said, this is two and a half by one and a half inch square tubing. Now those come out to a cross sectional area. Oh, <laughs> there goes my firewood pile. <laughs> that was fun. So these come out to a cross sectional area. I wonder if it's going to keep going. It might. Um, of just about 2.8 inches. Now a six inch chimney is 29 inches of cross-sectional area. So we are pretty darn close, just shy of 10% of our cross-sectional area system size as we, we call it. So system size on a batch box with a six inch chimney, it's a six inch batch box at a system size of what we call six inches or 29 square inches of cross-sectional area. So we want about 9% of that, 10% of that. So a two inch round tube gets us just about there. Now in my first iterations, I was slitting the front. Now this does give you the best performance. This slit would face the back of the firebox. This does give the ultimate performance, but I've stopped doing this because it does uh, advance the deterioration of the steel here. So this will actually wear down quite a bit faster. You can see it, it's starting to spread right there at the top. And that's what happens. It starts to spread, it folds out, flattens out, and then it just all starts to break down. So nowadays I'm leaving this solid, and I believe Peter does too. He puts a little a little uh, vein on top to uh, to block it from the direct flow of the gas and create a low pressure area here that pulls the the hot air into the firebox. Um, but I don't feel that it's worth spending too much time fabricating or worrying about the shape of this anymore because while you can get little advantages with the slit and maybe small advantages with the vein, they're going to disappear within you know, it depends on how you burn, but a few months of burning, this is all going to be starting to, to, to disintegrate. And so my viewpoint now is I don't spend too much time agonizing over the uh, final shape of this. A circle, you know, just a, a piece of tube with an open top it seems to work fine. From a performance standpoint, I don't notice a huge difference. Now remember, when I came up with this, I was just chasing the ultimate, ultimate performance. And it doesn't seem to, slop, to slope off too hard. Um, by leaving it just plain and what happens is you just get a much longer life out of the piece. So I leave them whole now and this, I'll go through this one of these in about half of a season. So it takes, I usually have to do, put two new ones in every season. Um, and what they do is they just disappear and they get down to about here and they still are working pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the performance of the stove. The, the emissions don't, you know, go up. The efficiency doesn't go way down. But what happens is, as this thing starts to get down to a nub, you start to lose chunks of wood and ash get down in there, and it just starts to plug up. So that's really the biggest thing. You know, that's when you know that it's time to replace it is when it's starting to get full of ash, wood starting to load up on top, and stuff like that. So, um, so don't worry too much about the shape. Put it in there straight and just let know that it's going to go away if you're making out of black pipe or um, I've been using those stainless exhaust parts. Again, I buy one ex exhaust part, cut it in half so I get two of these verticals. They still last about a year, um, two, I, 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 half a season for each half. So one whole part lasts me about a year. They're fairly inexpensive, but they do go away. Now what I like about those, buying those exhaust parts is that they come with a welded flange with mounts on them so they're very easy to mount so that's an advantage they're pretty cheap so if you don't have access to steel pipe 30 bucks for one of those with mounting configurations on it i think it's a good way to go so uh, with that said um i want to talk a little bit about some other you know materials and, and why we don't use those now one of the functions of this thing that's very important to remember now here's my current one um, one of the functions of these things that's real important to remember is that you're loading the fuel in here. The ports over here, these things act as andirons in the fire. So your wood hits this, and it hits it hard. You know, you're loading them when they're hot and stuff, so you're banging wood into this quite a bit. So this keeps the wood from obstructing the port. It's very important. If you get wood all the way to the back of the firebox, the stove will run like garbage. So. This plays a really important role in both 
keeping the fuel off the back of the, of the, of the firebox, as well as delivering the air. Now another function of the steel vertical here is that it heats up really quick and it heats up really hot so we're delivering ultra hot secondary air into the firebox which is exactly what we want to help maintain complete combustion. So I hear people speculating on some other materials we could use. I hear people say what about ceramic fiberboard? What about insulating this? What about um, ceramics or you know various other other materials and here's my take on that is that none of them while they might deliver the air into that location none of them are going to have these other functions that to my mind are just as important if not more so so the and iron function the function of keeping the fuel protection from the back of the firebox is crucial you got to have it anything softer ceramic fiberboard would last about a minute <laughs> um, you know, insulating coatings will reduce the preheat function of this and you won't get the clean burn, especially not in the early part of the burn and rocket stoves burn off very quick so it's important to get there as soon as you can. You've only got 20 or 30 minutes of peak burn. If it's taken all that time to heat up, you just blew a bunch of smoke out your chimney. So I do feel that metal's the best choice. I do feel that it should be considered a wear part. It's probably going to go away. And so therefore, I don't feel it's really worthwhile chasing, you know, exotic solutions. Now, that said, one of the reasons I'm making this video is I wanted to, I wanted to introduce you guys to my latest uh, attempt. And I haven't tested it enough to know, so we won't know. I'll give you info as I go through the season here. But this one features the flange from one of those exhaust parts, but I source this tubing, which is two inch schedule 40 pipe. And I got this from, I'm gonna put this down and hopefully not knock over all my firewood. So I source that from a company online called Rolled Alloys. And this is a product that they call their RA330, 330. And what that is, is that's a high nickel alloy it's rated at 2100 degrees, um, uh, I, th I hope, I think, continuous use, like that's its, its cycle temperature, although that might be its failure temperature, I'm not sure. Um, but it said specifically in the literature that it was designed for industrial boilers and things like that with, with multiple you know, heating cycles, it's made to be cycled hot and cold, which is one of the biggest problems with, all, with a lot of the other materials we have. Um, so I'm, I'm optimistic. We'll see how it holds up. Now, it wasn't cheap. This is, I bought an, it wasn't cheap, but it, what was cool about it was I was able to buy it just like I wanted it. So rolledalloys.com, and they have, you can, you, you have to sign up as if you're going to be, a, you know, um, an account. So you, you go through their little form, and, but then you can just order stuff online. You can order it in the size you want. So I just ordered this. This is an 8-inch piece of RA330 and I got it shipped to me for about 80 bucks so not cheap but if it lasts for a lifetime then it's well worth it and if it only lasts a year then I'm gonna switch back to black pipe so we'll see how that goes so what else can I tell you about secondary air? I think that's probably oh I want to talk about length a little bit in terms of just in terms of my designs um, if you're building the tiny cook stove or the uh, full masonry cook stove, you'll notice that I've left this length in the plans at 24 inches. The firebox isn't quite that long. That's because your door flange could be mounted anywhere on those bricks and people have different size bricks. And so the actual width of the stove can vary by a few inches depending on mortar joints and how you built it and the size of your bricks and things like that. So that door flange may end up moving by a few inches and you, you want to put it to the inside of the firebox but it still might move and this needs to protrude out beyond it so if you're building the tiny or the masonry stove and you have that in the plans save it till the end insert that thing in there and then just cut it off to protrude outside into um, into the room just slightly but make sure it goes through the flange and one other thing to talk about is the way to achieve or balance between the uh, the door primary air and the secondary air. Now when I'm running the stove wide open, I never shut down the secondary air at all. When I'm running the stove, when it's burning, when there's flames in there, I always leave it wide open. However, when the fire has burned down, I think there's a lot of value in closing off the secondary air to maintain 
the least flow through the system to maintain the, the, the most heat within the masonry so you get your thermal mass and a longer heat cycle. So I do close off the secondary air once the fire is down to coals, uh, actually pretty much all the way out. I try and let it burn you know, mostly out. And then I'll close it down, both primary and secondary. Now one thing you can do to achieve that in an easy way is you can actually place the door flange uh, inside the brick opening for the firebox door and then you can actually close that with a door over the whole thing. So the door flange is there, the secondary air pokes out into there and then that's behind your main door. And then your main door can have air control that is both prime size for both primary and secondary. So instead of the 10% primary air and 9% secondary air, we can make our main air entrance in the front door about 20%. And when we open that, it's going to allow access to that secondary air and into the firebox through the primary air. But what that does means it allows you to control both air uh, intakes with just one setting. So it's really convenient. It's a nice way to go. I'm not sure uh, you're uh, maybe someone on Donkey's Pro Board came up with that and it's I think it's a really really good layout. So I think that covers all of it. I'm gonna um, probably wrap it up there and, and uh, get this up for you guys. I've got some more stuff to announce in the future that's pretty exciting. I've been actually working on stoves um, pretty hard but I, I've been sort of under the radar just sort of working on my next phase here but I got some stuff to share um, looking forward to sharing with you. I can't tell you guys how um, happy and, and, and satisfying it is to see all of you building the stoves to my plans. I'm really enjoying interacting with you. Thank you so much for your questions and for your patience. You know my plans aren't perfect. I, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, constantly updating and doing new iterations, but thank you for all of you who have been finding my mistakes and, and asking good questions and being patient with me. And uh, I've got some more customer builds to share with you in the coming months. I've got some people are building some amazing stoves out there and they're, they're just gorgeous and it's so satisfying uh, to see you guys building them and, and to see how satisfied you are with them. It's really, really rewarding. So thank you very much, you guys, for all your support and for your continued comments and, and interest. And, uh, you know, we are getting somewhere. We are getting cleaner stoves um, out there and it's, it, Boy, it just it feels great. So, anyways, that's enough for now. I guess I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching and listening.